to what you see here, these high rolling sand dunes. So basically, these sand dunes were man-made just by the destruction of the forest. So it took years to evolve into that forest. Oh, it took just a couple decades. That's, 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 that's stunning. I mean, yeah. In, in 400 years, we, we changed an entire thing. Yeah. Yeah, so exactly. What took thousands of years to evolve into that big, huge forest took just a couple hundred years to evolve into what we I, see I, here. When I lived in Vermont, I learned that it had been deforested. Yeah. And they planted it all again. Now it's very green. Yeah. But yeah. It's the same thing. So People this has it. Yeah, so the, the dune grass was replanted. A lot of the um, scrub oak and pitch pine was replanted. But a lot of the stuff that we're going to see and a lot of the berries and stuff that I'm going to talk about you know, came here naturally. So you saw the, all the shipwrecks that we had here. So the United States Life Saving Service, which we now know is the Coast Guard, um, had some stations out here. So we're going to start seeing the dune shacks. And the reason for the dune shacks is when the Coast Guard men, or the lifesavers, or the surf men, as they were called back then, were stationed out here, they built these shacks all over in the dunes so that when they had time off, or they had family come stay with them, they could stay in the shacks. Um, so they didn't, didn't have to stay in the stations. So um, this shack here, this first one we see to the left, uh, is Ray Wells' shack. Ray and Nikki Wells came here in 1936 and they bought this shack from a retired Coast Guard man for $60. And Ray Wells was an <coughs> artist and she was also into theater and she helped to start the original, the, the Provincetown Theater. Nikki Wells, her husband, was an entrepreneur and he started the original Muse restaurant, which is where the Harbor Lounge is now. Yeah. Mm. Very rustic inside, no running water, no electricity propane stove and refrigerator. So as we go around back, what do you think that shed yeah, is in the back? Cool. Yes. <laughs> Give me one guess. We've all, we've all. Yes. Oh my God. Those in <laughs> Can't imagine yes. that in winter. So that, those are the outhouses. So yes, these shacks are still being used. So How did when they the, get in here? So I'll, oh, yep. So the artists and writers, when they started discovering the dunes, they came to Provincetown, they discovered the dunes, the beauty, the solitude, they wanted to live out here. So they started buying the shacks from the Coast Guard men. So fast forward to 1961 when the government takes over. This is a controversy because now the Coast Guard men, they didn't never bought the land that the shacks are on. They just built shacks all over the place. So now the government owns the land. So they uh, declare all of these artists and writers squatters. So they tell them that they can live on the land, live in the shacks and lease the land from them. But when they pass away, they can't um, pass the shacks down to their family. They have to um, turn the shacks over to the government. This is the Pet Watson shack. So these two shacks have both been turned over to the government. So what does the government do?